Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on comparing an ANOVA with a linear regression. So if you've worked with ANOVA and linear regression, you have probably heard that ANOVA is a special case of linear regression. But the two statistical procedures use different types of data and answer different types of research questions. So looking at these fictitious data I have loaded in SPSS data view, you can see I have an independent variable program with three levels, individual, counseling, group counseling, and treatment as usual, and a dependent variable functioning. So with ANOVA, you can have this type of categorical independent variable and this continuous dependent variable, or as SPSS refers to its scale, this is at the scale level of measurement, and ANOVA will determine if there's a difference between the levels of the independent variable as measured on the dependent variable. So the null hypothesis in this case would be that uh, there is no difference between the levels as measured on the dependent variable. And the alternative hypothesis would be that there is a difference. Now linear regression is set up differently. When you have a linear regression, you have one or more predictor variables or independent variables that are measured at the continuous level, the scale level, and then one dependent variable. And what linear regression will tell you is what contribution do those independent variables make to the variance in the dependent variable. How much variance do the independent variables explain in the dependent variable? So these are different statistics that answer different research questions, but there is a way to directly compare them, and that's through a procedure called dummy coding. And what the dummy coding procedure will do is allow you to run a linear regression and find the same result that you would with ANOVA. So looking again at this example, you can see I have the program independent variable, and I've created two other variables. I have group and control, and these are dummy coded variables. So you can see for group, the values are all zero, except in the cases where I'm referring to the group level of the independent variable, in which case I have a one. And for treatment as usual, a same procedure, except the one appears where you have treatment as usual. The referent category would be the individual level of the independent variable, which I do not have listed here as another uh, variable because I don't need to. In a linear regression, it becomes the referent because the values of group and control for the individual level are both zero. Now you can build a variable uh, named individual and have all ones for the individual level. And you may want to do that if you want to change uh, the referent. But in a linear regression, we would only load two. So if we have three levels of an independent variable, we only load two dummy coded variables. So first I'm going to conduct the ANOVA. I'm going to go to Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate. And this is what the dialog looks like by default. So in the case of ANOVA, I don't need to use the dummy coded variables. So I'm just going to load program as the fixed factor and functioning as a dependent variable. I'm going to leave the options on the right here as they're set by default, except for under the options button, I'm going to add uh, descriptive statistics, effect size, and homogeneity test. So click OK, this will conduct ANOVA, and you can see that you have the means for individual, group, and treatment as usual. We have a non-significant Levine's test, which is what we would want. Uh, this shows that we have homogeneity of variance, or homoscedasticity. And then moving down to the test of between subjects effects, we can see that we have for program, that we want to interpret this row, program, we have an F statistic of 6.521.
6.521 and a significance of 0 0.003. That is statistically significant with the alpha set at 0 0.05. And a partial eta squared of 0.237. So we would say that the independent variable is explaining 23.7% of the variance in the dependent variable. Also note here that the adjusted R squared 0 0.201. And then moving down uh, to the estimated marginal mean section, you can see again the means are listed. And this will come in handy in a few moments. So now I'm going to conduct a linear regression. And I'll go to analyze right from this output view to regression, then linear. Again, this is what the dialog looks like by default. The dependent variable will be functioning. And the independent variables in this case, now we can't use program. We're going to have to use the dummy coded variables here. So I'm going to use group, then control. And then under statistics, I'm going to add descriptives. Click continue and then click OK. So here we have the output for linear regression. And to make this a uh, little easier to see, I'm going to delete uh, the log entry here. So we can see here are the means from the ANOVA here at the top. And we have the descriptive statistics here for regression. And again, I'm just going to delete this. And the correlations, delete that. It gives you the variables entered removed. All right, delete that. And move down here to model summary. So notice here the R square, 0.237. That's identical to what we found with the ANOVA. And the adjusted R square, 0.201. That's identical as well. Moving down here to uh, the table labeled ANOVA, for regression, the F statistic is exactly the same, 6.521, and the significance, 0.003. Now I deleted the other output tables so that you can see the ANOVA uh, descriptors here, the mean, they call program, along with the coefficients for regression. So this table up top is from, from ANOVA, and this is from regression. So it's noteworthy that the two S statistics are identical, the P values are identical, and the effect size and the adjusted R squared, all identical. But if you look here at the mean values for the three levels, you can see that for constant, the value is the same, right? 43.867, it's identical. Because constant in this case is referring to the individual level of the independent variable, otherwise known as the referent category. But for group and the control, and this is for the unstandardized coefficients, the beta uh, unstandardized coefficients, you can see there's different values. They don't match the mean values up here. But that's because the way the output is reported. So to demonstrate, I'm going to open the calculator. And let's take the value of individual, or right? this is the mean for individual, is 43.867, 43.867. And if I add what's returned here for beta and group, that's 8.8, uh, .8. it's 52.667, which is identical to the mean for group from ANOVA. So it is giving you the means but in a, the regression is, but in a different way. It's giving you the constant, in this case the individual level measurement, and then the difference to group and the difference to get to control. So if these were negative values, you would subtract them from this constant, and since they're, but since they're positive, we add them. And it gets us back to the mean. And similarly, if I were to go back and take 43.867 and add 12.533, we get 56.4, which is the mean for treatment as usual. 
So you can see that ANOVA and linear regression, both procedures arrived at the same result, but the way the output is reported is different. I hope you found this comparison of ANOVA and regression to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.